You're listening to the Up Level Your Online Business Show, where wealth is empowering, purpose is crucial, and high vibes are non negotiable. And now, here's your host, certified business coach and practical woo strategist, Sarah J. Larrero. Welcome back to another episode of the Up Level Your Online Business Show. It is Sarah here, and this is going to be a solo episode, and it's an episode that I am incredibly proud of, and I, I will admit a little bit vulnerable. I feel very vulnerable to share this, but the reason why I wanted to share this and the reason why I wanted to create an episode about this is just to show you what is truly possible for yourself as well. And maybe in a little bit of a selfish way for me, it's also to remind me of just how far I've come. And hopefully we can all expand as we listen to this. So I want to go back a little bit, probably about six or seven years ago when I was living in Toronto. Actually, let's go even further back. Let's go back six years before that when I was just barely out of my master's degree. And I remember two days before I handed in my major research paper, my final paper of my master's degree, I had a job offer in a different city than where I was living. And it was a job offer for $25 an hour. And I was so happy, honestly, so, so happy with that job offer. And I remember going to my dad going to my mom and dad and having my dad review the contract and the employment opportunity. And then he just looked at me. He had this huge smile on his face and he was like, congratulations, you know, you've made it. And it was a great job. Don't get me wrong. It was really great, especially at that time. I had a full-time permanent job straight out of university. I was feeling really good about it. It was somewhat in my field of study And, you know, I was really proud of myself. $25 an hour was around a $50,000 a year salary, Canadian. And I'm sitting here telling you about all of this, having hit over a million dollars Canadian cash received this year so far. And we're not even done the year. And yes, I receive money in US dollars. But the reason why I wanted to record this podcast episode is because I was once making $50,000 a year. And I have now made over a million dollars in a year. And that to me is just so wild. And I think another really wild thing that I want to tell you about today, truly just to show you what is possible, is that when I started out in online business, while I was working in that exact same nine to five, I really only thought it was possible for me to make around one or $3,000 extra per month. I'm not kidding. (laughs) One to three thousand dollars extra per month. That's all I really wanted to make. I hired my first business coach, saying I wanted to make an, an extra eleven thousand dollars a year, and she really pushed me to stretch to think about thirty three thousand dollars in a year. And I was like, "Do you really think that's possible?" <laughs> and I remember that sinking feeling in my heart and in my body, being like, "But really, can I really do that? Because if I can do that, then I can probably." quit my job and move somewhere else. And she was like, absolutely. That's totally possible for you. And I think that's really interesting because you could probably say the same about making a million dollars in a year. I could have that same pitted feeling in my stomach saying, but really, is it really possible? And the mindset and the energy is the same. It's the same energy around I don't know if it's possible for me to make $33,000 a year. And I don't know if it's possible for me to make a million dollars a year. It all depends on what your energetic thermostat is around money. And so one thing that I want to talk about on this podcast today is not just what it feels like and kind of how I got here, but also what I would recommend to anyone who wants to get to the seven figure mark. And of course, I think this year we're probably just going to be just below the seven figure mark USD, uh, in cash received. I do think we've already hit that in sales, but anyways, do it in your currency, do it, do what it is that feels really good to you. Aim for the number that feels really scary for you. Uh, Because what I always tell my clients is, it's not actually about the number. It's not about the goal. It's about the ride that you're taking and who it is that you're becoming. 
as a process of getting towards that goal. The path is the goal. The game is the thing that you fall in love with, not the actual outcome. Cause there's always going to be a new outcome that you're going to want to hit. And the same thing with me, when I was thinking, I didn't even know if I could make $33,000 a year. I'm sitting here thinking, Oh my God, I just made a million dollars in a year. That same, that in that same currency made a million. How many years would it have taken me to make a million dollars if I was continuing to work my full-time job, right? It would have taken me 20 years, 20 years to make the same amount. Isn't that crazy? How you can collapse time from 20 years to one year. And I also want to say, I never had the intention of making a million dollars in a year, except for this year. This was the only year where I was like, okay, yeah, we can go for it. But if it doesn't happen, it's not a big deal. Because once again, I've unattached myself to the outcome. And thinking about it and actually going for it are two different things. And I think that really and truly going for it, not too many people do. And I was pretty aware of that when I first started doing online business full-time. And I knew that for myself, I was going to need a little bit more of a step ladder. So that's why I don't have a, uh, you know, from 50K a year to a million dollar a year story in one year or in two years or anything like that. I got here in six years. Uh, but at the same time, it's also because I didn't really want to collapse my timeline any further. In fact, I really didn't think it was possible for me to even get to this place and get my company to this place until this past year. So it's really interesting when you kind of look back and hindsight is really 2020 with everything that you're doing when you can realize that like, oh yeah, I never thought that this was possible, but I also took baby steps to get here. And so last year was my biggest year in business. And now this year is my biggest year in business. And next year is going to be my biggest year in business. And what I found works the best for me in terms of planning and goal setting is really just honoring my nervous system and honoring who I am as a person and understanding that, you know, I'm in no rush to get anywhere. And I usually need the first step before I can see the big picture. And that's exactly what I've been doing over the past few years is I've been building a lot of those building blocks. And so for anyone who's thinking, oh, I'd love to get there, you know, it doesn't have to happen overnight. And the ride is just as beautiful as the destination. In fact, the ride really becomes the destination because the destination is always changing. And that is how I arrived here, which I didn't even expect to arrive at. And I honestly didn't expect to arrive at it so soon in the year because, you know, I still have another month left to go of this year. And it just feels really amazing to say this and to be able to be here and share all of this with you that like, yeah, I used to think it was only possible for me to make around $3,000 a month. So there you go. If you are at the level of possibility currently that you're like, I can only make three, five, even $10,000 a month, don't worry, you can totally get yourself to the level of possibility and belief to really create a seven-figure year for yourself. But you don't need to. You don't need to rush your way there. You can truly enjoy the path, enjoy the game uh, just as much as the goal. So now that I've told you all of that, hopefully that really, really inspired you and really started to help you expand I want to tell you about a few different things that I truly needed to learn this year or things that have happened this year that have opened up my mind to what a seven-figure or even multiple seven-figure business is all about and the things that I learned the most this year. So the first thing is that you're really only as good as your team. And if you've been at the multiple six-figure mark or if you've even been at the six-figure mark in your business, you'll know that to get there didn't take you a lot of team. It actually probably took you one or two subcontractors. So maybe a virtual assistant, maybe they're in the Philippines or in another country. Uh, Maybe you have one person who's in your country uh, or who speaks your language, follows your cultural tones (laughs) for your business. I often say that, you know, to get to even multiple six figures, I like to have one person who's 
like kind of more low skilled and then one person who's a little bit more high skilled. And that's basically like the gamut of my team right there. Uh, and to get to seven figures has really been very different. Uh, and I think this is where team comes into play the most because now at this level, you're not only hiring people just kind of like do extra busy work for your, for you, you're actually hiring people to do very highly skilled work. And so the hiring process becomes a completely different ballgame. The things that you're looking for in people, how you're paying them, what's industry standard, what type of work culture and what type of environment you want within your brand, within your business, all of that stuff really starts to matter. And for me, what I've also realized, and this has been like such a nice, sweet realization, is I love having a team so much more than only having one or two people working with me. And so having multiple t- people on my team who are all really amazing to work with, and it, it took me a long time to curate this team this year, let me tell you. <laughs> but to have multiple people on my team who are constantly cheering each other on has honestly been one of the greatest gifts of getting to this level. That and having so many more clients with results, it's been insane. So the combination of every month being able to interview multiple clients and how they hit like 10K and beyond, plus having a team that I truly love and just they feel like they're so supportive has just made all of the difference. And it actually makes the business feel easier, believe it or not, because everything isn't on my shoulders anymore. All of the different avenues of business, all of the risks involved in business, all of the customer service dilemmas, all of that is no longer only on my shoulders. I'm no longer one woman woman show who's managing everything. I now have highly skilled people in a few different areas of my business who can put in those roles. And I remember earlier on this year talking to a client who said, well, I don't really want any of that. I don't, you know, I don't really need team members. I don't, I don't really want a big business. And I was like, that's okay. That's, that's your prerogative. But I've also realized that in having a bigger business and a bigger team, my clients also benefit from it because I'm not completely strung too thin. I can manage my own time and I can run my business working. There's there's been some weeks this year that I've been only working like 20 hours a week and I can have my team supporting my clients as well. And sometimes my team can actually support my clients more effectively than I can. And from that lens then, I actually view the latter and I view the, well, I don't really need a lot of team members and, you know, like I can just do everything on myself as the very cheapened version of business. And now I, I'm starting to understand why it's actually so important, even for clients, when you have a bigger business, when you have multiple team members, where you even have assistant coaches who can help you and help your clients in areas that you might not even be an expert in. And so I never fully understood that. I always just thought like, oh yeah, people just are going to hire more team members and have assistant coaches and things like that because they just want to work less and they want to make more money. I never fully understood that that is actually so much better for clients. And it only hit me like literally at the end of this year when I started to give so much more responsibility to my assistant coaches where I was like, oh, this is so much better for my clients. They get so much more support. They still get me and they get someone else working with them as well. Like, wow, before it was only me. I was the only person giving people support. Everything was up to me. And so now, even when I look for masterminds and I look for new programs to invest in, now I want to make sure that I'm only investing in programs that have big teams because I want to feel that exact same support. And that was a very big shift for me because for a long time, I was like, I'm never going to have an assistant coach. I'm never going to have someone else who supports my clients because that's going to lower the quality. That was my whole mindset. That's going to lower the quality for the, for the clients. They're not going to get as great results because I'm the one who has to be coaching them. And now I've seen with my own eyes how that is actually not true at all. And the opposite is true. When they have more support, they actually get better results. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Right? So 
That's my lesson number one. Hiring more team members isn't more of a burden. It's actually more of a gift for your business, for yourself, and for your clients. Another big lesson that I learned this year is the more risk you put into things, the more reward you get. And this was in specific how I had to really redesign my mindset around ads. And I wanted to win at the ad game. I've done ads in the past. I've actually been doing my own ads since around 2015, 2016, which is so crazy to me. So I'm very well versed in Facebook ads. I've helped a a few of my clients now really scale up their ads as well, but I've never scaled up my ads into the five figure mark, which to me was like so daunting. And Luckily, I was working with really, really great mentors. And this is one of the biggest things, I think, and a huge shift for me too, is working with high-level people, which I'll talk about in a second. But working with them and having them show me and teach me their ad strategy and like how much they were investing and how much they were seeing coming in return and, and really understanding ad investments at higher levels helped me to understand how much I actually really needed to be putting in and how much risk I needed to be willing to take in order to see really, really great rewards. And I think it's really interesting because I have really good profit margins. Actually, I have pretty high profit margins for a seven-figure business this year, considering the team and things that I have. And It's literally because of the fact that I studied my ads and I worked through them over and over and over again. And I learned from people who were scaling just as much or actually more than I was scaling in terms of my ads. Because in the past, when I've done them, I may have spent around $500, $1,000 a month, but then when I wasn't seeing really, really good returns, I'd get really scared and I'd shut them off. And that's because I didn't understand all of the metrics fully for scalability because I only knew ads and I only knew how to make ads for a six or multiple six figure business. I had no idea how to scale ads for a seven figure business. And so this year, that was one of the biggest things that I learned was truly how to win at the ads game and how to know for sure what to pay attention to, which brings me to my next point. And I think this one is so important and this really, I really hope it lands for like any level of business. And this, this was like a big shift that I had to make this year, but I could no longer speak to 99% of people, even in the business world, okay, even business coaches. I could no longer speak to 99% of people in the coaching space about my business because none of them, none of the people that I knew had gotten their businesses to seven figures. And so the problem with asking people who've hit multiple six figures for advice on a seven figure business is that they don't actually know because they've never been there. They've never been there and they've never helped their clients get there. And so this is also a common problem with people who say, let's build you a six-figure business when they've not actually built themselves a six-figure business or helped their clients build a six-figure business. They'll be able to tell you strategies, sure, but they won't actually be able to show you accurate strategies or like real, raw, practical data for how it's done. And I learned this the hard way a few years ago when I was relying on business friends who are also business coaches to help me with scalability. And then I realized I was like, but they're not even at the level that I want to be at. So their advice that they were giving me, although it was really helpful, it was helpful for someone who was at six figures. It was helpful for someone who was trying to get to 5k months. And so this is one of the biggest shifts that I have learned is I just no longer listen to people who are not at least at a seven figure level in business when I'm asking for business advice, unless it's like mindset, energetic advice, sure. But if I want to ask someone about ads, if I want to ask someone about team, if I want to ask someone about client fulfillment who isn't at this level, it's going to be completely inaccurate. All of the advice I receive, while it's sure, I'm sure they're trying to be helpful, it's going to be very inaccurate. And this is why I ultimately made sure that I hired mentors who are already at that level. 
because I've hired coaches before who are like, oh, yeah, 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 we'll help you get there. But they've never gotten there themselves. They've never helped clients get there. And so it becomes a advice that isn't actually based on any practicality. It's all theoretical. And that becomes very dangerous, especially when you are juggling large amounts of money and putting in large investments into your business. You want to make sure that when you hire someone to get to this level, that that person's already gotten there or they've already gotten multiple clients there. That is going to give you so much more confidence in what you're doing. And I'm really glad and grateful that I stuck the course that I was on because multiple times I could have said like, oh, well, you know, this isn't really working the way that I wanted to. And therefore I'm going to stop it. Or, you know, so-and-so other business coach or so-and-so friend told me that, you know, it doesn't work that way anymore. It doesn't work that way in 2023. Meanwhile, my mentors, the people I'm paying for <laughs> are telling me, yes, this is working really well. And every time I listen to them, my business grows. And I think that this is actually something that's really, really common for a lot of people. And I've unfortunately seen it in a few clients this year where once something isn't working for like a week or two, commonly all we want to do is jump ship. So that's our very first knee jerk reaction is to jump ship. And that is not the actual reaction of a winner and someone who's going to be really, really successful at business. In fact, the most successful business owners know how to keep monotony and they know how to embrace a little bit more of boring and tweaking funnels and tweaking and optimizing at 1%. So rather than just throwing the baby out with the bathwater, they know, and this is something that I ultimately had to learn, that you optimize at 1%. You optimize tiny things. You tweak tiny funnels. You don't let go of your entire business model altogether because of the fact that one thing isn't working and even one thing isn't working for one week. And I've seen this time and time again with so many people. And that's why what ends up happening is basically then they leave the business, they ditch the business model that they have that's already been working for them, even though it hasn't been working for a week or two weeks or whatever. And they leave that business model because they're like, oh, it's no longer working. Or, you know, like, oh, this other person has something that's so much better. And what they end up doing is they end up spending another three months learning an entirely new model and implementing an entirely new model, which that model then runs and it runs really well and steadily for another three to six months. And then once again, it needs optimization and it needs to be tweaked. And then the person goes, oh, well, crap, this is no longer working again. And nope, can't be in this anymore. Can't be in this type of program anymore. Leaves that program, leaves that model, goes into another program and another model, and then takes another three months to implement something, another three months where it's working really well. And then it's just like this hamster wheel, this roller coaster ride of finding things, tweaking them, scaling them, stopping the scalability, and then starting over. And when you're in that hamster wheel, you're just constantly creating new things and you're constantly designing new things and you're constantly implementing brand new things. And it's just so inefficient. And that's actually what keeps people at lower income levels for longer periods of time, even if they're investing in business coaches and mentors. Um, it's simply because they're just keep on doing different things all of the time, right? It's kind of like politicians. If you have different political parties coming in to politics, like, you know, this is why we have four-year terms. Because if you had a new person coming in once a year, like you'd never get anything done, right? Everyone would just come in and they'd like, break apart with what the other person did. It takes, it actually even takes longer than four years to see the full implementation of a political strategy in a country, but we have our four-year terms. And so if you think about it in business, if you think about a four-year term in politics and how that's not even enough, enough time to like fully see the results of a political strategy and a socioeconomic strategy in a country, then imagine what it does to a business to constantly jump ship and constantly switch strategies once every three to six months. And one of the biggest reasons why I got here this year, and it didn't take me longer than this year, is because I kept the same thing. I, I stuck to the same thing, even when it was really hard, even when like so many other people were telling me, oh, leave that, do this other thing, you know, shiny object syndrome everywhere. I decided to stick the course. 
And that is honestly such a huge piece of advice that I can give to any of you. And even as I now step into a new partnership and a new mentorship, what I ultimately look for and what I continue to look for in each and every mentor that I have is now that I understand the way that I operate and the way that I like doing business, I just make sure that every new mentor that I have operates in the same way, just with a slightly different optimization strategy, a slightly different way of doing things. That's totally fine because I love learning new things. But if I don't launch, let's say, I'm not going to go and hire a business coach that all they do is launch (laughs) when I already know that my evergreen strategy is working really, really well for me. Similarly, if you already know that your, your launching strategy and your course strategy is working really, really well for you and it's getting you really far, you probably are not going to go to a high ticket strategy because you don't want to fix something that isn't broken. Unless you don't like it, that's a completely different story. If you really don't like your strategy, if you really don't like your business model, then that's different. But if you're seeing success and you're happy with it, then you want to make sure that every time that you hire someone new, they're doing something slightly different, but still the same as what you know you like the best. And with that requires a lot of research as well. But once again, it's something that I learned the hard way a few years ago. When I hired a business coach where I just wanted to do evergreen strategies and she was like, no, 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 let's do it. Let's just do a launch strategy. And so I tried it once again. It's not that launching doesn't go well for me, but I once again worked really well for me for a few months, but then I started hating it because that's actually not the way that I like running my business. And I find the way that I run my business to be a lot less stressful, a lot, a lot less stressful than the launch cycles um, that I think a lot of us have been taught in the online space. So these are the biggest things that I have learned this year from getting my business to seven or sorry, to seven figures Canadian. And I just hope that by sharing all of this with you, if you're completely new to business or if you're like below the 10K month mark and you're thinking that this is never going to be possible for you, I'm here to show you that it is possible for you because I was exactly the same as you. And if you are already at the six or multiple six figure level and you're wondering how it's going to be done and you're wondering strategy wise how you can do it, I hope that all of these other little lessons that I've had about who to listen to and you know, how to do your lead generation, how to start to think about ads, how to start to think about team. Um, I hope all of that is really effective for you as well. So if you enjoyed this episode and you think that one of your friends would enjoy it as well, feel free to forward it onto them. And it would also be mean the world to me if you were to like hit subscribe, um, and leave a review. I greatly appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much for listening and I will catch you next time. Thanks for listening to the Up Level Your Online Business Show. If you enjoy our show and would like the show notes and free goodies about how to grow your online coaching business, head over to sarahjlorero.com for more information. We hope you'll tune in next time.